Rudy Boy Gonzalez is joining us. Rudy, before we get into some of your uh, career going on as right now, uh, what do you think of uh, the backlash against Rusev and uh, his uh, and uh, the Russian ravishing Russian Lana making remarks alluding to the airline disaster? In all honesty, I don't see what the problem is. Simply being that it's World Wrestling Entertainment, it's TV. To kind of like ignore it, I don't, I don't really see that what the big deal is. I, I think that it, you know if, if you're if he's playing a Russian gimmick or whatever a character, then I mean that is something that's gonna that's gonna come up. Not, I mean when when we were going to war in World War Two and after after World War Two came out and stuff, you know it was over with. He had all these German characters, Fritz von Erich and von this guy and von that guy and maybe different times, I guess. But fans in, want to look at this as WWE, it's entertainment, it's whatever, it's not real. It's, but then on the other hand, and they say, oh, my God, and they want to take it as it's legit, <laughs> it's real. And, it, you know, it, you can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. I look at I look at the TV show. I mean, you, we have training and stuff Monday night and I look at it as the dynasty. I don't take anything seriously. It's entertainment, it's sports entertainment, it's pro wrestling. I didn't think nothing nothing about it. I just the uh, current event that's going on and there just so happens to be a Russian wrestler in the in the on the program. So I mean do you ignore it? They would have ignored that situation and right now they'd be talking about well how come they didn't address it? How come they didn't So fans can cry about it one way or they can cry about it the other way. To me, it just—it's it, just a wrestling show, and it, that that's it. It's just a wrestling show. This is the undisputed wrestling show. We're talking to Texas wrestling promoter Rudy Boy Gonzalez, who is a head trainer at the Texas Wrestling Academy. The last time I I looked, uh, Rudy, you were uh, Allied Independent Wrestling. You hooked up with Ricky Morton in Tennessee. How'd that go? It's like uh, a guy playing baseball and he gets to go to bat against Roger Clemens. That's how I. I like it. Ricky Morton was one of the guys when I was breaking in down here in Texas through the years. I mean, I was just a kid, and he was on his way to get into the Rock and Roll Express all stuff. So now, 30 years later, for me to be able to, to have matches with him, it's almost like, let me let me show you what I've learned through the years. And I would have, I've had two matches with him. Both times I've had lumps in my throat. I'm nervous. I have a uh, whole lot of admiration and respect for Ricky and, and what he's done and his accomplishments, accomplishments through the years and, and who he is in this business. And then here I am having a match. And I, you know, it was unbelievable to me. I mean, that's just, that's just me. To me, it's unbelievable. It was unbelievable. So Rudy, what do you, I guess, you know, I've seen different posts from you and, and you're very vocal when it comes to, you know, opinions and topics and wrestling. Uh, you have your views and you're not afraid to, to share them. So when you're, you know, in Texas promoting, what do you look for? I guess, how do you like to promote? Are you, do you consider yourself more modern or do you think you're a throwback old school type promoter or what, what would a person expect if they were to go to Rudy Gonzalez show? I enjoy like everybody else, good high flying type action type match, you know, exhibition, whatever, Lucha match, whatever, with a bunch of spots. I also enjoy storytelling wrestling. I also enjoy, wrestling as a sporting event as an actual match two guys trying to win and and that's the way i put it you know i put my shows over at it's their events i can't stand the fans that sit there and critique matches openly you know oh, i saw him miss the punch there oh that really gonna hurt you you know you're gonna have a bruise tomorrow you know what dude if that's if, if that's how you're gonna look at my my show then just leave down here in texas there's some there's some towns that we do where those fans don't exist, as funny as that may sound, there are fans that they still believe in Wahoo McDaniel and Johnny Valentine and wrestling's real and 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 those are towns that we go to and so when they see the high flying type matches, they're in awe. How can these guys do you know backflips and how can these and then when they see the guy you know the other guys come in there and start going back and forth and trading you know, wrist locks and hammer locks and big shoulder tackle or whatever. They're in all of that too because that's now that's wrestling. I try and add a little bit of everything, but keep the guys, the guys that want to do the, the goofy stuff. Like I just tagged on someone earlier today because you know some guys are doing a cage match and this guy climbed all the way to the top of the cage and there was a guy laying in the middle of the ring. He climbed all the way to the top of the cage and did a back bump 
down to the floor. Of course, the, the guy on the floor moved, you know, the bottom of the ring moved. And so the guy hit the mat, the whole place, like, ooh. And then the guy that moved was getting up. He did something, but the guy that took the big bump turned around and suplexed him. Now, in reality, if I just fell from the second floor of a, a building onto the, onto, the, onto the floor, onto the pavement, I'm not going to get up and keep fighting. Like, you know, even if I fell on a pile of trash, I'm not going to get right up and suplex the guy, another guy or whatever. I'm like, you know, there's got to be somewhere in there where the guy that, that took that big fall, he has to be hurt. And so I, I mentioned that on, on their little Facebook thing, and one guy was like, well, it's an, okay, dude, you're not Mick Foley. Well, in WWE, they do this. And, okay, the same WWE, you're at a high school gym, and the guy that just took that big bump is, a, you know, he's overweight. He's not, doesn't even look like a wrestler. And so don't insult the fans. So, and then somebody chimed in with like, well, well, we put on a good show. Okay, I'm glad you put on a good show, and I understand that. But it, stuff like that, in my opinion, hurts the business. And it's been hurting the business. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We're talking to Texas promoter Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Before I kick it over to Zane, Rudy, tell us a little bit about your background as a wrestler and how you managed to uh, get into promoting and training. I'm going to age myself here. I started in 1982 with Southwest Championship Wrestling. Joe Blanchard and Tommy Blanchard and Jim Hernandez and all those guys. I came up the old school way. I, I helped with the ring with a guy named Juan Reynosa for a little while, and then I refereed for a little while and sold T-shirts and all that stuff, tickets and fl- the flyers and whatever, and then a spot opened up. And at the same time, I'd been training a little bit with Manny Fernandez and Al Perez and Chavo Guerrero and Chicky Star and Ken Timms and a few other guys, Ali Beta Turk. And so a spot opened up on a show. Al Perez came and, you know, I was supposed to ring the bell that night. Al Perez came and said, hey, you're wrestling tonight. I was like, uh, I am? Yeah, let's go. And that was my first match. It was me and New Zealand Sheepers, who later on turned out to be the Bushwhackers. When I got into wrestling business, the last thing in my mind was to be a pro wrestler. I, I wanted to learn the business. I was actually trying to get into to coaching, to high school coaching, and I kind of stumbled into pro wrestling. And I'm not going to be corny and say I – I don't know how I could put it, but I started wrestling. I went through all the highs and lows like everybody else did. I got screwed on paydays. I made some good money. I went, traveled across the country. I went to Mexico. I, through the years and what have you, and, and then Shawn Michaels asked me to run his wrestling school, and I, I said, sure, yeah, okay. The other two guys that were, were helping, they ended up, you know, for whatever reason, they ended up leaving, so I was left with the school by myself. I didn't mind. I, again, like I said before, I, my, when I got a football coach, and so this is kind of like bringing me full circle. So now I'm becoming a wrestling coach, and that's fine. I, I don't, I, I, I enjoy helping out guys and teaching. I did Sean school. I got to train Brian Danielson and Brian Kendrick and Lance Cade and a bunch of other good kids. And Sean went to work full time again with WWE, and he gave us school. And so part of the training that we had was we trained you, but we also got you experience by putting you in shows. Luckily, I learned a little bit from Joe Blanchard way back when, and so I put some shows together for the students. We, we you know, we do events around Texas. Helps the guys get experience, just like any other job. You need to get experience with your done training. So now I got Paul London helping me train guys, uh, and he's been helping me for the last couple of weeks. So and it seems like it's a good fit. It's good for everybody. The students they get a little bit of old school. So I'm still old school. Um, they get a little bit of the old school stuff. They get a little bit of the new stuff, the WWE type of stuff. And, and that's where we're at right now. I'm happy where I'm at in my wrestling venture. That's lasted 30 years now. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, I'm going to kick it over to Zane Paisley. Zane? Well, nice to talk with you, sir. Um, you posted a link tonight to our show and on your Facebook, and then you put, I'm not going to jump off a cage. I'm not that dumb, but we will talk wrestling. What What was that all about? That was a match I just A guy had posted the clip of a you know, the guy climbed up to the top of a cage, and you know, I commented on it, and then I got a little backlash, and, you know, some guy said, well, you can go with it, or you can get out, or something stupid like that. So I've been seeing a little comment all day long, so when I posted on there, I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump on a cage, but we can, you know, we can't talk wrestling, so. Well, okay, so so let's let's talk some wrestling then. You said that you are are, are kind of old school. What does the training look like for the first six months at at the Texas Wrestling uh, Academy? 
a lot of uh, just basic cardio stuff, uh, learning the whole basics, psychology, that type of, you know, just learning how to do hammer locks. I mean, it's nothing flashy. Hammer locks, head locks, you know, hitting the ropes, taking bumps properly, taking care of yourself, taking care of the other guy, being in good cardio shape so that you can go 10, 15, 20 minutes in a ring, 30 minutes in the ring. And then if you impress somebody, if you impress me, I guess, then if you're, if you're agile enough and you, you know, you have the, the cojones, then we can try some, some goofy stuff. But I'm really not into that. Paul's more that type of, of wrestling. I'm, I'm all about respecting the business and, you know, and to be very frank, don't shit on it. Don't make fun of some guys or, you know, they are like, you know, well, that was 1984. Well, in 1984, I was making a living wrestling and doing headlocks and hammerlocks and old school type of wrestling. I wasn't doing all the backflips. I'm older now and I don't have all the, the broken bones like some of these other younger guys have because they do the, the goofy backflips and they land on their head. And I just, I just heard a story about a guy that went to a table the other day in Austin, Texas, and he has second degree burns all over. What does a flaming table have to do with pro wrestling? I, I don't remember Bobby Eaton ever going through a, a flaming table and getting second degree burns. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember Ricky Morton, Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, uh, Hulk Hogan. I, uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember any of those guys going through flaming tables or, te- you know, thumbtack matches or that's ridiculous. Rudy, we're going to kick it over to our resident professional wrestler, the new Evolution heavyweight champion, the Morning Star, Will Huckabee. Will, what you got for Rudy Boy Gonzalez? First of all, I was going to say good evening, Rudy Boy. I don't know if you remember me or not. Uh, we actually worked a show together in Texas a couple months ago. <laughs> oh, we're at. We were at NWA Texoma. I think you were at Cahagas for the national title. I was yeah, a, yeah, I was, yeah. It's a funny, yeah. funny story on that. I remember. <laughs> do you want to tell the funny story? Do you know what do you know about the the Cahagas match? Is that what you're is that what you're talking about? The the, the story behind that is funny. It's it's re, and it, you know I don't care who's listening. To this. It was effing stupid. But pro wrestling and the politics nauseate me. That exists and for what for fifty bucks? Guys are complaining about. You want me to, you want me to tell a story? Please do. We love exclusives here on the Undisputed Wrestling Show. Here's the, here's the exclusive. So there's a guy up in North Texas that ran a town called Gilmore. And um, nice guy. I, I don't have any qualms with him or anything like that. Always been nice to me and, and what have you. And, and uh, he was with, he was part of NWA. Uh, NWA All. <laughs> right, right. Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, something like that. And I happened to run in Texas AIWF, Allied Independent Wrestling Federation. And to the fans, that it means, you know, whatever. To me, it's just, to me, it's, you know, it's nothing. It's, it's a wrestling name like Red Bull Monster Drink, you know, or, you know, uh, it's, it's just a name. So I'm not exactly sure what happened with Philip and the NWA, but he calls me like in last November and he says, hey, man, uh, I got a question for you. And I'm like, sure, what's up? I was coming back from Tennessee. I'm like, what's up, Philip? And he's like, would you mind coming to work for me? I, I, sure, I don't, I don't mind at all. Yeah, what's, what, you know, what's the date? And he said something like, uh, March, something or other, and, uh, which was six months away. I was like, sure. And I told him, you know, there's going to be a shit because I'm, work, I'm working for you, right? And he's like, I don't get it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. He goes, I, you know, these guys have pissed me off, yada, 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 yada. I said, okay, well, that's between you guys. What do you want me to do? And he's like, well, who do you want to work with? I, who's on, I said, who's on your card? He was on your roster. He said, I got Putsky and I've got these guys and these guys and these guys. And you know, I have Tokyo Cahagas. And I love breaking, breaking the fave here, but I love the guy. I love the way he works. He brings like an intensity to his matches that guys today just don't have. And so I was like, well, I, I wouldn't mind working Tokyo. I'd love to work him. And he was like, all right, you got it. And I'm like, but isn't he like the North American something or other? He's like, I don't give a, you know, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I, you know, you, you got it. So I was like, all right, that's cool. He said, just don't say anything until I until I make the announcement. I said, okay, no problem. So November goes by, I didn't hear anything. December goes by, I don't hear anything. Uh, I'm making another trip to Tennessee. I'm towards the end of January. I'm messing around with my phone as I'm driving. You know, I know it's against the law, but anyway. Uh, and I see the flyer pop up on his Facebook deal. And I was like, oh, shit, here we go. So I, I swear to God, you know, two minutes later, one of the NWA guys calls me. And he's like, 
what's going on? And I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? He's like, how did you get a North American title match with Pegas? And I said, I don't know. Uh, Philip called me and asked me if I wanted to work. And I said, okay. Well, how in the world can you have a title match with a North American title match? You're not even with NWA. You're with AIWF. <laughs> like, so what? Well, that's not right. That's, that's BS, you know. Uh, that, that can't, that's not going to happen. It's not, it's just not going to happen. And I, I, well, okay, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I don't care. I don't, I'm just going to have a match. I don't care if it's for the, if it's for the UFC world title. I, I'm just going to have a match. So we hung up and then, uh, Tokyo calls me and he's like, dude, I'm with you in a couple of March. I'm like, yeah. I go, is that a problem? He goes, no, not at all. I said, all right. He said, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And he's like, all right. How did, how did shit that happen? <laughs> I was like, I, Phil called me and asked if I wanted to work. And I said, okay. Is it a problem? He's like, no, not at all. Not at all. I, I enjoyed wrestling with you. So, all right. So, I guess what happened was, leading up to this show, there had been some talk going back and forth between the, the NWA board of whoever and the promoter about not putting me in this show because I was going to be unprofessional and, you know, I was going to steal the belt and all this horrible BS that he's not even part of, NWA and BS. Oh, I'm going there to have a match. You know, I show up and there's there there you could feel those tensions. I, I, apparently, the days leading up to the show, there was like some serious phone calls back and forth and text messaging about not putting me on, putting another guy on the show instead, and giving him the belt, dropping the belt to him, and I'm gonna steal the title from these guys, and I'm gonna I'm this bad dude and BS man. It, it was and I told Philip, look, if it's gonna be a problem, dude, just I'll I'll just not work. He's like, no. Oh, F says, I'm going to put you on anyway. I'm going to, you know, I don't care what these guys say. So there was something going on with the board and Philip that had nothing to do with, with me. So we did the match. I mean, I was happy with it. I mean, Cahagas is, is a real deal. I have a shitload of respect for that guy. And, you know, he defended the title. And, you know, I was coming after it. And not once did anyone, did a fan, say, oh, my God, this is the AIWF Texas representative. You know, nobody gave a shit. We went out there and, and I had never wrestled in, in Gilmore, Texas before. And so after the match, I got my little standing ovation, I guess you could say. And I, you know, some people congratulated me on a good match and what have you. And again, not, not, not one soul mentioned the other promotion or, you know, man, had to do that. Or it was all political crap. I felt bad for Philip and I felt bad for Tokyo and James Beard and, you know, the, the he was a referee and, and, and a, a class act. They had to put up with the shit, but it is what it is. I went in there, I did my match, I, I lost, and that was it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lance. I, I, was, I was there for that show, and I just remember how tense that uh, locker room was. Yeah, it was, like I, it was like I was Satan or something walking in there. He joked about it. I even, like, what if I just grab the belt, I take a picture, put it on Facebook, and you're new, North American champ, you know, that would really, people would really shit over that. But I never did. That wasn't, that wouldn't have been appropriate. Before Rick takes over and, and asks you a question, I just want to ask one question. Uh, even though I know, I want our fans to know, how do you feel about guys who wear kick pads? Why are they wearing kick pads? And, I mean, you know, there's pro wrestling, guys, it's, it's like the new thing now, but I think it's more like the thing to cover up the fact that they can't afford wrestling boots. I've wrestled for 30 years. I've never worn a kick pad, ever. And I've kicked a lot of guys in the back, in the face, in the chest, in the arm, and the, I've never worn a kick pad. Why are you wearing kick pads? To me, there's no place for them. I know that's the style now, and I don't know why. To me, there's just no place for them. When I train my guys and start putting them on shows, I do have guys, hey, can I get kicked? Nope. Just buy a real pair of wrestling boots. But they're $500. Invest in your outfit. Invest in your gear. For 500 bucks. I'm sorry. I don't price them. You just buy them. You wear them. No place for kick pads. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We're talking to Texas promoter, trainer of Texas Wrestling Academy, works for Allied Independent Wrestling, Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Rudy, are you happy with the state of wrestling today? I guess when you watch WWE or TNA or Ring of Honor or whatever, are you happy with the state of wrestling as far as um, there's no storytelling anymore? It's all spots. The old school um, telling stories have just gone by the wayside. What What's your opinion of today's product, at least in the majors? I, I think that the reason why there's no storytelling, I may be wrong, but this is my take, is that there's so many guys now that are in the business, in those spot promoters that are putting shows together that didn't come up through the business and have no idea how to tell a story. So their idea 
is to just what we call back in the day hot shot stuff. Just for no reason, put wrestler A versus wrestler B in a cage match, flaming tables match or whatever, and there's no rhyme or reason. There's no storyline behind it. It's just going to get the fans in the door, which has now led to crappy wrestling. There's nothing behind it. There's some good athletes. Don't get me wrong. There's some outstanding athletes today that are in the business. But, but as far as, like, I talk to a guy from TNA all the time, and I'm like, dude, will somebody please do a loser leave town match, build up for it, you know, and have somebody leave town. Well, all the guys are in the contract. I don't give a shit if they're under contract. But a man from Dusty Rose was under contract, and he lost a loser leave town match, and he came back as a midnight rider. Well, everybody's going to know who he is. Sure, everybody's going to know who it is, but you don't know for sure until you take off the mask. Stuff like that. It, it doesn't happen anymore. There's no buildup. So it's just, what am I going to do to put a show together that's going to get people in here? Okay, let's have wrestler A and wrestler B have a chain match, lumberjacks, and the fans can bring weapons. And don't forget yeah. a dirty finish. It has to have a dirty finish. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. And guys will say, well, WWE does it. I don't care what WWE does. That's a different world, world wrestling entertainment and sports entertainment. In my opinion, there's two different brands of wrestling. There's the independents, which can be ran as the old territories, and then there's the over-the-top stuff, Vince McMahon or, or Triple H now. There's world wrestling entertainment. Whatever WWE does doesn't mean I have to do it. See guys wearing cut-off shorts and tennis shoes to the ring and you know John Cena does it well if you look if you look at John Cena's history at one point he wore boots and he wore you know fiber shorts but well Mick Foley wore well if you look at Mick Foley's history way back when he was in Dallas he wore boots and he wore tights and so guys are trying to mimic WWE and you can't you, the money's not there you don't have the athletes the look you don't it's not no, there and those guys so, have paid their those guys have paid their dues you exactly. know, they've I mean, done their time in the business, and, and they've earned their opportunity to do other things. If a guy comes to the Wrestling Academy, he's not ready to start wrestling until he knows what the hell he's doing. It's not, you know, okay, uh, you're my buddy, so, you know, I'm dating your sister, and, uh, you know, I'm buying a car from you, and me and your buddies since we're in high school, and, you know, so you're going to be my world champion of ABC promotion, a world champion, yeah. You know, the guys learn to respect whatever it is that we're doing, and they get the proper gear. They go in the dressing room, they shake hands, they help out with the ring, but the ring needs to pay in their dues. They put up flyers. If it, if I had to do it, if Rudy Boy Gonzalez had to do it when he was 18 years old, then Joe Blow's going to do it in 2014 as well. And and to me, it, doing it that way, the guys appreciate stuff more. But it used to be the promoters of old were wrestlers like Joe Blanchard. Joe Blanchard wrestled before he became a promoter. Tell me how many matches Bruce Starr has ever had, the head of NWA. And I'm not sitting on Bruce. I just threw that name out there. And there's a little, But there's a lot of promoters out there that are like that, that have never had a wrestling match. Or maybe they did. They, you know, they weren't getting booked because they were so bad. So they started their own promotion. And they have no clue. So they copy what they see on TV. I book a show, put you guys, I think we'll have a good match. And I let them build off that and have somewhere down the road a blow-off bat, build up into this, then the following show will do that, and get some mileage out of these guys, not just one match. Rudy, unfortunately, time's running out on us. I want to make sure we get some plugs in for yourself here before we let you go. Tell all the wrestlers out there who want to hook up with the Texas Wrestling Academy how they can do that, and then let the fans know how they can connect with you. On Facebook, Rudy Boy Gonzalez. I have two pages, one for me and all my wrestling buddies, and then I have another page that's just for the fans. And it's just a page that's with my wrestling buddies. We do wrestling talk, stuff that, again, I'm, old, I'm the old school guy, so stuff that we, I may bring up on one page, the fans don't need to know. Any guy out there that wants to come down to Texas to work for me, Texas Wrestling Entertainment, is, uh, there's a Facebook page for that. You can call me at 210 210- Three two six one five two zero. You can email me at Texas Wrestling Entertainment at yahoo dot com. Guys, after they want me to look at their matches and critique them, Texas Wrestling Entertainment dot com. Same email address. Plenty of There's a lot of guys that do that right now. Uh, if you want to book me? Same email address. Texas Wrestling Entertainment dot com. Get do clinics for you guys. I've done clinics for several promotions around the country, and I I don't do the two hour clinic twenty bucks. The clinics I do are six hours long. Uh, we cover a lot of stuff. I'm not the guy to rip people off. I want guys who run the business the right way. 
if I can help one guy go from being lost in a match to at least have a some idea of psychology, I did my job. Anything else? <laughs> That's it, my friend. I appreciate it. We'll have you come on another time. There's a lot of other stuff I'd certainly love to talk with you about. We thank you very much. We'll catch up with you later. Okay, Bowie? Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Rudy Boy Gonzalez.